Hello? Hey there, it's Lance Bangs. We're here to see Don C and Kanye. Oh, here, it's over here. <laughs> All right. Tony, will you just uh, give us a sort of brief intro as to what you're, where we're at and what you're doing? And... I, the uh, song we're doing a video for right now that we're doing a color in is Can't Tell Me Nothing. Meaning? That's the whole meaning of the song. <laughs> you can't tell me nothing. Could you, well, do you, do you want to make that whole shadow black? Why do you want to do that? This, this, is the, this is the point where I take all the footage and run and disappear for a week and nobody can find me and then this guy goes nuts. <laughs> what, uh, what, are you guys going to cut this one first or the other one? This one? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at that shot like, yo, this is, a, this is a special thing right here. That shot right there with the fabric in front, peep this. Look at this, Spike Jones. <laughs> Like the blues in the back look good, right, Spike? And what what was it? I think we talked about what was the idea for the video? What was your initial in, intention for doing a video for that? Emotionally, the way I connect with like this type of imagery, I've always wanted this and I've never had it. So this is kind of like if you always wanted a certain car and you finally get it, you always wanted a Ferrari and you're in the Ferrari. I feel like I'm in the Ferrari now, visually. <laughs> You're you're in the mid, you've done you're doing two videos right now, but you're you're in the middle of the record. The record's maybe halfway done, is it? Nah, I'm um. It's halfway done in the sense that I have all my records that I think I want. <laughs> I'm not the type that does forty records. I do fourteen records and just work on those records for a long, 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 long time. But I want I want to make perfect records. <laughs> I said, if the devil wear Prada, Adam Eve wear Nada, I'm in between but way more fresher. So, like, what, what are some of the lyrics in the past that have gotten scrutinized? I know the government admits to AIDS. I always get questioned about that line. Like, every. So, now that I'm. Now, when I write, even when I'm writing, like, funny lyrics and kind of jokes, I gotta think, like, damn, I might have to talk about this whole line for a while. It's never like, oh, it's just a line for me. I know that every word I say, like some of the music, kids, you know, adults, they're gonna listen to it hundreds and hundreds of times and it's gonna seep into their self-conscious, like what I'm saying. So I keep that in mind while I'm in the studio. And are your expectations on yourself any different on the, your first record is, than on your third record? I always think I'm gonna do way better than, I'm, than I really do. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> So any type of success that you saw me have, it's way under what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people would be feeling like I'm cocky because of the shit that I say. Yeah. If you could imagine the shit that I think. <laughs> Why, it's more cocky? <laughs> <laughs> like, so... Like, give me an example of something you say like, and what like the I'm real standing was. in front of this camera, like, yo, I'm up against Madonna. Yeah, that's like <laughs> I'm going for Michael Jackson's throat right now. <laughs> that's the type of shit I'm thinking. I'm sitting up, uh, you know, getting some chords played and shit on a song. And I'm saying, I'm going for Stevie Wonder right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> even if, if we didn't do a window and we just picked something that kind of fit the skin and the colors were muted, I want to have those type of shots actually on MTV. <laughs> I thought that, you know, even though I definitely don't think that it was song of the year, I thought the Dixie Chicks video was really beautiful though. They did stuff using fabrics. It's, it's kind of stuff like a, a Broadway, like so they get these big sh screens behind them that have projections of shit with fabric on it. Just these art displays, like, you know. You know how people do, they have the fabric art yeah, displays yeah. and these asymmetrical, you know. You know, I think, 
for me to say a statement like, and this has never been done before in a rap video, is this, what does that mean? It's like, it's so beyond that. Everything I do has never been done for a rap video, duh. The thing is, I'm not delusional. I'm not delusional because people make, when people make great art, it hurts me, like in a good way, it inspires me. And people, you know, do shit that's great. Like I thought when T.I. dropped What You Know About That, it was like, oh shit. Or even like Justin's whole success this past year with the sexy back and like his art packaging, the, the Terry Richardson shots and all that stuff. I was like, yo, they, he did good with that. Or certain Coldplay videos or like, it's, I'm not delusional, like, ah, I have blinders on. That, that's what the true arrogant person is. They walk in the room, and arrogant people, you, I don't think, ask as many questions as I ask. The bottom line is, I'm a fan, period. I'm a fan of really great stuff. So, you know, by the fact that I'm really great, by default, I'm a fan of myself. <laughs> also. So... <laughs> Anything for a Klondike, and I'll do anything for a Blondike, and she'll do anything for the limelight, and we'll do anything when the time's right. Uh, baby, you're making it. That, 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 that don't kill me. I got kids, I made up a dance for that. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we got to catch that on the beach. Oh. <laughs> Oh, so when that part happened, they'd be like that in the club. <laughs> you know, I haven't really capitalized. I'm, I'm really probably not as rich as people think I am. So I'm not, I don't have fuck you type money. Yeah. So I'm still at the mercy of the fans. Yeah. If the fans are like, yo, we don't like Kanye anymore. We don't want to come to his shows. We don't think he's dope or that. Uh, I would like be fucked up. Kind of. yeah. I'll have to maybe live a different lifestyle. I have to like really go hard on the real estate. <laughs> Architecture. Yeah, like I'm saying, like I'm not in a, I'm not even like in Pharrell or Puffy's position or R. Kelly. I mean, all those people been in the game way longer than me, and hopefully, like a year, two, three years in, I'll be able to be more in their position. But with that, the fact that I do that, I'm not in a situation where it's just like, yo, I got so much money, it's like, yo, fuck, whatever. It, I think I give people better art. It's really like, yo, my life depends on how good this does. And every morning, I mean, I'm in the studio at five o'clock. I've had three five o'clock at nights. It's, it's, one, it's one magazine I read that has the year in, what were things that were important to us this year? It's like, I feel like I'm in competition with the hula hoop. What the hula hoop was to America, I want my songs, my pieces of art to be that. You, you yeah, yeah, you hope it, you, you're, you, that you're making something that's going to resonate with people. And... To, yeah, to, resi to resonate. Yeah. Is it important? Did it connect with you in a certain way? It's not just fucking music. It's not just a video. I think, a, I think the true artist should be willing to die for what he believes in. He should be willing to die for his art. He should be willing to sacrifice whatever worldly possessions he has to give the world the greatest form of art possible. And... That is what my whole motivation is, and that's what kind of happened at the European Awards, and, but it wasn't translated properly. Well, we're very glad, but tonight the Justice Boys are touring in the U.S., so there is, they're very sorry they can't be here tonight. Well, I had this thing where I like spazzed out because uh, they told me I was going to win this award, and they gave it to someone else, and I went up on stage to spaz, right? Oh, hell no. Oh, man, yeah. You won already, you won already. But I said I paid a million dollars for this, but everyone read that ass, well, you're a fucking millionaire. You know, you're, you're just like, ah, oh, I paid a million dollars for this. And what I'm saying is, no, seriously, at that time, I might have had two million in my account or something like that. Okay, take it if it was a person, you know, that had, you know, $10,000 in their account. And you put, you invest 5000 into something. That's giving up half of what you got, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's just saying that level of commitment to say, I want to deliver to y'all the best product possible. And it, it's, I know it's like, what I'm saying is still like, it's gonna come off in a way that people are still thinking like, you're still talking about millions of dollars, fuck you, Kanye, you know? 
This shot, you definitely should do heavy correction for when it's, uh, when it's in the smoke. Because okay. by the time it gets to this, we might not even have that in the video. Okay. I don't think that'll be a frame of the video. I'm trying to compete with the best videos you've ever seen in your life. I want to go up against some of the shit you did. Like, I want to go against some of his shit, like older shit. Like, give me some mo and put your hands in my eyes, you see. I want people to see my shit and be like, ah. Uh, luckily, I had like, a, I don't know about you, but I had like this woman from out of nowhere plucked me and just, just sat me down one day and just started showing me all the Gondry shit and all the Mondino shit and just John Paul Good like in the like beginning beginning and was like yo this is who I think you are. And what did the stuff look like to you? What was, how did you? It was all commercials and videos, but it was like all abstract, all imagery based, color based, you know, photography based. And she just thought she just really was the first person to put that idea in my head. Like you really you have this kind of talent, this level of talent. Oh yeah, that's that you know that is that's like uh, that is like your your whole shit, your mere comedy shit. Yeah, one of the main things that I said is, on this video, I want to go black. I want to have shots where if you pause it, it looks wrong. Like, why did they do that? But it creates the emotion. It's the dark to light. Because in a concert, you'll go black and just hear the screams. You hear the music or a fashion show. Sometimes they black it all the way out and shit. But videos are, they have these rules. My, my thing is to break all rules of video, but, but follow all rules of emotion. I wouldn't want to use any black shots. <laughs> like I, I, you know, for me, I just wouldn't do it. But it's him, so he'll do it. And as a film, as a filmmaker, do you have you ever struggled, like you know, to work with somebody who had so many opinions creatively? Do you do you embrace it, or is it ever frustrating? That or how do you? No, it's it's the opposite. Like uh, I'm a, everybody works different with me. All the different artists that I've, I've worked with all these years, everybody's different. So with him, I'm hands off. But I do the math upstairs, so, so I kind of like fill in the blanks for him. I know I don't know. If I thought I did, then I would put out some bullshit. The fact that I know that I'm not on that level right now gives me the area to learn. It's like being a child. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I'm always looking. I'm always searching for new shit, you know, and always looking for art. Like art and anything, everything is art, everything is design. So as you make more, you always see something else. And I, and I think at the point when you're satisfied is, you know, you're dead. You should never be completely satisfied. You should always feel like you could do something greater than that. Because some of the stuff that I'm trying to express to you, I haven't figured out how to word it yet. Yeah, yeah. And so I guess I don't know, you chop it up. And... I love the Warhol book, because he says these statements that in hindsight were like complete, completely ludicrous, right? But I love the fact that he sticks them. He says, yo, I'm, I'm a director now. That, that whole art thing was just, you know, was, that was a phase in my life or something like that. But yeah, for yeah. him, that's what it was. And for other people, it was like the greatest shit ever, you know? And yeah, but the, none of this stuff we're looking at is on a crane, right? Did you even bring a crane? I had a, he had to have a crane. He had, he had his puffy moment where he forced me with no grips no union, anybody, you know, yeah. nothing. I had to get a crane in the middle of the desert and operate it on, on a skeleton crew. Like, <laughs> my crew is also eight people. When I work with Hype, he knows this. I go in and I take everything I ever that ever connected with me emotionally about a video and I bring it up to him in a conversation. So I'm pulling the best of Hype. True, which ones, <laughs> which videos? Specifically. Man, shit, mo money, mo problems. Uh, coming from Chicago, we used to see videos, right? And if you wanted to get in your fresh air, you would dress like a video. Then I came to New York, and I saw mad people not like really dressed fresh, like how it looks in a video. And that's when I realized, like, oh, people were really only dressing like this for videos. But at that point, I'm fucked up. Now, <laughs> I dress like it's a video every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> I feel like I was, like I, like I was, um, I wanna, this is gonna be a fucked up quote, but I feel like I, you know, like if a, a uncle touches the girl young and like she becomes a stripper, it's like those, <laughs> those videos touch my mind young. And now it's just something like I'm fucking, I have, to, I have to dress like I'm in a video every day for the rest of my life. I'm fucked up. I was touched as a child by the videos. <laughs> it's hype spot and shit. Those fucking videos, man. That, bit, that song with this video makes it like some, 
it's some other shit. I think that's the anthem for people. Wait till I get my money right, then you can't tell me nothing right. You was that that's like you talking to your boss. <laughs> it just all references that, like this, this, this struggle to be in a position where people can't say shit to you. That's what everybody wants. Yeah. Well, I'm being in a position where, man, I ain't got to listen to anybody. But aren't you in that position? Or? Nah. Why? Because, like I told you, I'm, uh, uh, the fans are over me. I have to answer the public perception. Mm -hmm. So, like, if I wanted to do, like, have a book like Terry Richardson, where I was like, <laughs> you open it up and my dick is hanging out or some shit like that, that wouldn't be, that, that wouldn't be good for me, you know what I'm <laughs> Like, when I did my first video, like the getting to Kanye world, like when I was about to drop the album, I had like clips of porn in there, and it was a major conversation about taking that shit out. You know, and then what's funny, I had conversations with people afterwards that had no idea about that, and they said, oh, I went to your site and everything, I really like it, man, it's nice and clean and stuff. <laughs> so people like, like that whole clean thing, and I was like, damn, maybe my managers were right. Because yeah. it's kind of like, Imaging, like, okay, you, we want, we think you can make it through the door with this. And, like, me having that polo shirt on, it's like I walk right into middle America with that polo shirt on. <laughs> People want to live vicariously through you. Don't nobody want, like, the thing is, when I drive around my SLR, that'd be, that'd be making people's day. Yeah. Like, yo, I see Kanye kind of SLR. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> like, they'll be, if they see me in a holiday, they'll be upset. That would dis disappoint them. <laughs> Black people, you never do dirty gym shoes. That's like, like don't. I, I'm going to give you the theory of the reason why. The, the gym shoes, you know, I learned from this girl in study hall back in soft, sophomore year, high school, why we keep our gym shoes so clean. She said, the first thing I look at is a dude's shoes because it lets me know they got a job. They got clean gym shoes because that's the biggest thing. You try to keep your gym shoes up. You can keep Air Force Ones and keep them clean. You obviously had to be getting a check or some type of money. We could never do that. Like, you could never wear those shoes with holes in them and forget about it. White people and black people have different advantages. Like, a white guy can, they jeans could be tighter and it's cool and shit. But a white guy can't wear a chain because it's like, all super guido. And then, I don't know like if that's wrong for me to say, yeah. but I just love using that word just right now. So like, guido. <laughs> I think it's wrong for a black person to say guido. Yeah, probably. So, guido. <laughs> so, <laughs> what are the other advantages, disadvantages? Our biggest advantage is that we, could, we wear gold jewelry really well. Like, black people could put jewelry on. It's just like the whole king is a queen thing. We're supposed to have jewelry. Like, we ain't even supposed to downplay shit like that. Like, white people are really supposed to downplay shit, and black people are supposed to upplay shit. White people look funny with rims, or a black person looks appropriate with rims. Like, a, a white person might look funny with a red leather coat on. That's bad appropriate for a black dude to have a red leather coat on. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I bought this chain in installments. <laughs> I paid for this in installments as it was being made. <laughs> It's kind of like I got to check in. I'm like, okay, I'll take a percentage of this and put it right there. We're putting out real, quote unquote, real clothes. How do you mean? Well, you know, just in today's time, it's a lot of articles of clothing. When you look at it and say, hmm, I wouldn't wear that. So what, like, in, in, in clothes, like, how do you know you know how to design clothes? Because I know I don't. Okay, it's like, it's like if someone was uh, driving to California from New York. When they say, I'm going to drive there, someone who just gets in the car and goes might end up in Atlanta. Someone says, yo, you know what? I don't know how to get there. Let me try a map. Yeah. Let me try navigation. Let me stop. Even though I'm using the map, let me stop here at 7-Eleven and ask them, am I going the right way? So any meeting I have... If I meet with Tom Ford, if I meet with anybody, if I have the opportunity to talk to Nigo about clothing, it's like me stopping at 7-Eleven, like, and I pull out. I say, okay, look at this garment. And what do we need to do, like, on the, the zippers? And, and look at this ribbon right here. And it's the fact that I didn't go to, to fashion school. And I just, I wear the shit and I, I live the shit and I'll eventually kill. 
It's like the, I'm gonna fucking kill at this stuff. Yeah. A lot of artists I went to, uh, artists I went to school with when I went to art school, they they didn't really have it, but they learned all everything textbook. But those don't end up being the greats a lot of times. You know. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I feel like I'm in a relationship with the fans. I feel like. I'm in their family, so when I fuck up, everybody knows about it and shit. And a lot of times, well, it's, it's some of the information is incorrect because the media changes shit. But and I think I owe them something. They've invested something in me, and they allow me in their house when they play my music. I'm a part of their lives and shit. So you know, I have all this like that de definite like these social things and little things that happen with me. But that just comes out of me. It's not like something I focus on. Like, I'm not into politics. I don't know who all is in the White House. I couldn't tell you, like, anything. I could never go on Bill Maher. But I'm into, I'm into art. Like, what are the things that you've, that you've been outspoken about? Like, obviously, there's the Katrina thing, or, you know, there's, things, there's these things that get a lot of attention, but would you do it differently? Would nah, you would I, I would never do anything differently. You know, you just learn from it. Because at that point in time, that's what happened. You know, I can't hop in a time machine. Yeah. But I can learn from stuff and say, let, let me approach this this way the next time. I'm not into it. It's not like, oh, I'm planning to speak up on this right now. Oh, I'm planning to spaz out, blah, blah, It's yeah. just, it's just in my net, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just conforming to the whole, just sit down in your seat theory and read the teleprompter theory is just, that type of shit happens. But Kanye, because from, from the outside, from my point of view, one of the things I admire about you is that you seem out, you, you seem like you say whatever's on your mind and you're outspoken and... I just, I think it's just not very smart of me. What? This is not very smart of me. It's not the smartest thing to do. It's just the emotional thing to do. Yeah. A lot of times keeping it real isn't the smartest thing. Like, I think I could be a way better businessman, but I'm too much of an artist, I'm too emotional. They did this survey with like all these execs and they said who, who are gonna be the most successful artists within the next 10 years. And they put me, they, I, got, I was on the top 10, but I was knocked down on the list under certain names because they said he's too much of an artist. I'm making music that on one end is definitely for the fans, but I also feel like my life depends on this shit really being very good. And I feel like I'm in the same position right now that I was right before I dropped the first time where people are like, I don't know if I wanna like him. Again, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I definitely get scared sometimes. I get, but the fear, the fear is a, 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 a motivation, it's a driving tool. And you know, I think that that's another point that's, that's completely contradictory to the whole arrogant stereotype that I have, the, the label of arrogance, my level of fear, the fact that I'm scared all the time. Scared of what? Uh, scared of failure. Scared of, scared of not creating something that the, is absolutely. Hmm. I guess I'm not scared of not creating something great. I know I'm gonna do that. Uh. Just scared every now and then when you just when you get enough media that's so incorrect, that's so one-sided, you get enough people walking up to you one day saying "fuck you," "I hate you," that you might just look in the, the mirror one day and be like, "damn." Damn, am I gonna be out of there? Am I gonna be in like Terrence Trent Darby or something? Yeah. I was talking to Lenny about Terrence Trent Darby. I was like, yo, man, one time people thought he was hotter than you. Da, da, da. And, but one time he said was, well, you know, he was mad arrogant and he just talk all this shit, blah, blah, I'm looking at myself like, oh, <laughs> that can fuck you up? <laughs> oh, well, if that's the case, I'm, <laughs> I'm out of here next week. <laughs> what do you mean, what does society want you to do? Not testify. Meaning? I'm not supposed to say how great that is. <laughs> You're supposed to be humble and say, ah, oh, I don't know. Or Somebody's supposed to come in and be like, oh man, that is just the craziest shit I ever saw in my life. And I'm like, oh, you, do you think so? For real? That's ignorant. That's plain. Actually, that's, that's disrespectful to the person who just said it. That's me acting stupid. Like, I didn't know it was good. <laughs> or like, if somebody comes to you and say, like, yo, you know, that's a dope outfit. Yeah. What my grandfather told me to say is, you got good taste. <laughs> That's true. The thing is, I don't even have a specific talent. I'm more like a computer or like 
I was about to say something that's going to be completely politically incorrect, but I'll, I'll tell you this other, this theory I have that's just way politically incorrect, that if it's soundbited, that it's going to completely fuck me up, so I'm not going to say it on camera. Okay. But, yeah. I got to put a new chip in here. Anyway. Can you stop that for running? Yep.